Hello everybody, it's Vinyl Rich here with Vinyl Finds number 50, I believe. I'm going to start it off here, well, anyways. Saturday night, Peroni, cheers. I'm going to start it off here with a, something that's not a record. A book. My Damage by Keith Morris. Um, the Vinyl Potato showed this book. I didn't know it was out there. I'm currently reading a book about Miles Davis, The Electric Years. But I went and picked this book up today. And I, I started looking through it. And it, it's a good read. Excellent book. Um... Kraken Vinyl, what's his name, Gibo, guy over there in Britain, he did a Gimme 10 on books, and I was thinking of doing that, and I think I'm going to wait till I read this, because this will make my top 10 book. Keith Morris is an excellent storyteller. If you look at any of his videos or interviews, he's a great storyteller, so I knew this book was going to be good, and, uh, yeah, I, I I haven't read too much of it. Um, I guess the Vinyl Potato, I don't know if he's read the whole thing. But he made some references, or he made some comments that I'm not so sure about. One was dealing with the gangs. I don't know, I haven't read anything, I haven't read the whole book. I've read just bits and pieces. I mean, there are gangs in Los Angeles. So I don't know if Keith Morris was talking about gangs while he was in high school. Um, he did live in Inglewood for a while, so I don't know. But as far as the punk rock gangs, um, I mean, maybe in high school there was some stuff going on. But at the shows, there there really was no big. It, there was no problem with gangs. Later in the '80s, things got kind of violent. But it was more jocks and skinheads showing up to shows. Anyways, I'm going to start showing some records. But I'm sure this is going to be a great book. And I I recommend this. Even if you're not into L.A. punk or into punk, I'm sure you're going to like it. I know I'm going to love it because I, I live this shit. Anyways, I'm going to start showing the vinyl. I recently went to a record store. Look, I was there for over an hour took three things up to the register and the guy's looking at him and he goes are you gonna listen to the all three of these and I go yeah and I'm thinking you know kind of like proud of myself you know because one of them is a classic rock album one is a prog album and one is an 80s hardcore punk album so I'm thinking yeah man I'm a diverse motherfucker, you know? And the guy's looking, well, I guess they are all oldies. <laughs> I never thought of uh, 80s hardcore punk as the oldies, but I guess it is. But uh, that kind of gave me an idea to do a series of videos. But anyways, the first one I'm going to show here is The Birds, Untitled. I believe this is their 10th album. This is a really good album. It would have been better served if they would have released it as two separate albums, though. The first album is a live album. Recorded in 1970, I believe. And the second is, their, is a studio stuff. And I think it would have been better served if they would have been released as separate albums, honestly. But the... Studio stuff on this is quite good. It starts off with Chestnut Mare, which is a great classic bird song. And then they, they uh, do Truck Stop Girl, which is a Little Feet cover. and It's a really great Hungry Planet. Got a psyche stuff going on there. and This is an era of the Furs, it gets no respect. But I'm telling you right now, it's a great, great album. I 
I don't know if the birds really made a bad album, but if you see this for cheap, I recommend picking it up. Birds Untitled. That was my classic rock album of the bunch. Um, the prog one is Finch. Glory of the Inner Force, I guess. This came out in 75. This is their first album, I believe. I've never heard of this band before, but what, what I noticed is when I'm looking, at, I'm looking at it, I mean, it caught my eye. Promotional DJ copy. Whoa! But that's not what caught my eye. What caught my eye is there's no vocals listed here, you know? Alright, you know, I'll pick this up. And there aren't any vocals on it. Um, it's a 75, like I said, prog album. By 75, I was not into prog anymore. But uh, this is a good album. It's a driving organ. Much like the early Yes. Before uh, Rick Wakeman screwed up that band. Um, it's a Dutch band. And uh, I really like this album. It's all instrumental. Four songs? Yeah, four songs. Good album. Here's the inner sleeve. And it's on the Atco label. Very good album. Now, the third album is the one that I was most excited about. Well, besides the Burrs one. I love the Burrs. They're one of my top five out of bands from the 60s. But this album here, Life Sentence. Hardcore punk band from Chicago. This is their first album. I was really happy to see this thing, man. Um, they have two singers. One sounds kind of like uh, Kevin Seconds, and the other one doesn't. I don't know who the other one sounds like, but two distinct singers. And it's a, this is a great, well, it's a very good mid-80s hardcore band. But after this album came out, there were problems. There were lawsuits and other crap. And I guess the guitar player, he got the rights to the name. He released another album, Life Sentence. And it's not as good as this one. But it, unfortunately, you know, like probably the two singers didn't get along. But it's a good album. This one is a really good one. The, the other one is, it's got little squares that says Life Sentence, I believe. But yeah, this is the one to get. It's really good. And it's on um, Walk Through Fire. Walk Through Fire. It's a good album. Okay, those three albums taught me that uh, I'm an oldie motherfucker. You know, I'm a dinosaur. Anyways, I got three singles here I'm going to show. First one here is Little Miss Perfect. Back with Demon Preacher. Now, who the hell is Demon Preacher? You know? It's on Small Wonder Records. This is the label they're known for. And uh, this is uh, Nick Fiend. The singer for uh, Alien Sex Fiend. This is his band before Alien Sex Fiend. This is, came out in 1978. 1978. Yeah, this is his band before Alien Sex Fiend. I was jazzed to find this, man. I mean, honestly, I didn't even know this existed until I saw it. Great. And it's really good. Really good. This next single here is Patti Smith, Hey Joe, back with Piss Factory. This is a 1977 Sire Records version of this, a reissue of this, special collector's edition. Um, I believe this came out originally in 75? I think it might have been recorded in 74, but I believe it came out in 75. This version came out in 77, I think I said. And it's on Sire Records. Cool. Very cool. And my third and last single I'm going to show is a split and it's 
One side's Red Cross, the other side is Side Eyes, and it's songs that Chargo taught us. Now, who's Chargo? Apparently, Chargo is a the guitar player for the Go-Go's. Who I, I don't know if mo most of you know that Charlotte Caffey, I believe her name is. Yeah, Charlotte Caffey broke both of the songs on this. She's married to Steve McDonald, the guitar player and vocalist, one of the vocalists for Red Cross. And they do a song, really punky song. Let's see. Screaming by Red Cross. And it's written by Charlotte Caffey. The Side Eyes. This is their daughter. The guitar player for the Go-Go's and the guitar player for Red Cross's daughter right here. Lead vocalist in the Side Eyes. I never heard of this band until I saw this single. I've watched their videos on YouTube and really good shit. And they do a version of a really great punk rock song, Don't Talk To Me by The Side Eyes, which is a song originally by The Eyes, punk band from the early, mid-70s that uh, Charlotte Caffey was in before she joined the Go-Go's. As most of you know, the Go-Go's were originally a punk band from the mass scene. The Eyes were a punk band from the mass scene. But anyways, this is a really cool single. Songs that Chargo taught us. Chargo. Caffey. <laughs> from the Go-Go's. Now this next album here. Now this next album. This next album, man. I had heard of this guy. But I had never heard him. Sunhouse, Father of the Folk Blues. On the back here it says demonstration copy, whatever. Maybe that's why it's in such good shape. Supposedly, you know, this guy, he's the one that taught Muddy Waters, Robert Johnson, I don't know. Now most of those old uh, 30s blues recordings I, I can't get into because the recordings suck but this was recorded in the 60s Columbia 2i this looks like it was unplayed so that caught my eye so I got it. As soon as you hear this, as soon as you hear the first guitar chords, you realize this is no ordinary blues album. I got goosebumps listening to this. It's Sunhouse and his guitar. It's a Still fronted guitar. I don't know. I'm not a guitar player. Still grunt fronted guitar player or guitar. And he plays the downstroke and the upstrokes are all very prominent and it's a very unique style. Like I said, it's just him and his guitar and all the songs with the exception of the last song on both sides. On the last song on both sides you have Al, Blind Al, Wilson. Al Wilson, he was the harp player, second guitar player and sometimes singer of Canned Heat. He is the one with the high voice. Going, on the going back to country and He's the, the, on the road again. He died fairly young. And uh, 
quite honestly, uh, Canned Heat without Al Wilson, they're just a bar boogie band, you know? He's the one that made that band. I mean, the, the musicians were very talented in Canned Heat, but without Wilson, with, without his edge, they weren't, they weren't a great band. They were just another boogie band, you know? But back to this album. Holy moly, this is a this is a great album here. Unbelievable. From Death Letter, the first song. Check out Death Letter on YouTube. Man. The last song on uh, side one is uh, Empire State Express. Um, Al Wilson, Blind Al Wilson, he plays second guitar in that. And the last song on side two is Levy Camp Moan. Blind Al Wilson, he plays harmonica on that. And uh, if you question Blind Al Wilson's credentials, when the uh, Hooker and Heat album was made, with uh, John Lee Hooker and Canned Heat, Lee Hooker, he, I saw him in an interview, and he said that, man, that boy, the, uh, the way he said it, that boy, he's damn near the best harmonica player I ever heard. But, motherfucker, this, this is a good album right here. And uh, I didn't realize how good it was until after I bought it. Now, today, earlier today, I went to uh, Amoeba Records with the intention, of, I had four albums I was going to get. They didn't have any of them. I was going to make my first heavy metal video, you know. Metal theologian might know what I'm talking about here. But anyways, one of them was Dope Throne by the Electric Wizard. They didn't have that. But I picked this one up here. Electric Wizard. Black Masses. Came out in 2010. Now they had this album here. Came out in 2010. And they had another album that came out in 2014. Both on Rise Above Records. Now, they had some other Electric Wizard albums there, but they were like producing the Czech Republic. And I'm thinking, man, I don't know about that. And those ones were like 12 bucks cheaper, you know? So I, I thought, you know, I'm going to get one of the more reputable ones. Well, anyways, here's a picture of the band playing in a graveyard in England. Black Masses. I've only listened to the first album of this, which is Black Mass, Venus and Furs, The Night Child, and Patterns of Evil. This is some good shit, dude. I, I dig this band. Um, I've been listening to some doom metal on YouTube, and a lot of it, after a while, it gets kind of boring. It's very slow paced and boom, boom. That black, early Black Sabbath sound. This band here is much more than that. This is the insert. The lyrics. Oh, I don't know if I want to read the lyrics of this band. You know, I, I didn't listen to the lyrics on the first album. <coughs> like I said, I've only heard the, the one record. On red vinyl, very cool. Um, I've only heard a couple of their albums. The one previous to this was uh, Colt, whatever. The one, the record store day one. In fact, that's the first time I've ever heard of this band. Uh, Thanksgiving. Listen to them on. I, I found out they were. Had a record store release and listened to it on YouTube. 
Oh, man, that's good. Went to Amoeba Records on Record Store Day and I picked it up. And uh, this is the second record I got of them. I was gonna, I, I was planning on getting Dope Thone, Throne or whatever, an earlier. And the one thing about this band, the vocals, are, they're mixed way back in the, they're, they're not real prominent, they're mixed way back in the mix. Some of these songs he's mixed a little bit heavier, uh, I mean, more forward, but the dude is a good singer. And uh, I, don't, I don't know, I, I just really dig this band. I picked up a Shindig magazine. It's basically the only magazine I buy anymore, and I don't buy it as regularly as I used to. This is a real good source of you know, checking out new music. But my new source is the final community. In fact, uh, I might have to stop watching some of you guys' videos. I can't afford this shit, you know? Keep buying all these records. But, uh... My birthday, tomorrow, so happy birthday to me, and uh, take care everybody, take care.